All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back into another video. Today, we're going to be doing the film review for the New York Giants against the Detroit Lions preseason game. If you guys are enjoying the video, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe for more content just like this. We're going to be pumping out a lot of these film stuff uh, all this weekend, including uh, it's just straight up all 22. You won't see my face here. It will just be under, you know, with some background music in the background, but you'll have the highlighted player and it'll be sp four specific players all throughout this weekend uh you guys really liked that last year so i'll be doing it again this year so um right now we're gonna, be, we're gonna start with the complete offense and then we're gonna move on to the defense because that's how i have my film set up so um i did all the offense i didn't even go through my defensive film yet i'm gonna record this offense while i still have uh the plays fresh in my mind i wrote down obviously the timestamps and stuff like that but um without further ado a word from our sponsor this video is being sponsored by BetUS, America's favorite sports book. Right now, BetUS is offering a 125% sign-up bonus up to $2,000 on your first three deposits. Now, I'm not good at math, but if you put down $1,000, that means you're going to have about $1,250 to work with. Now, if you ask me, that's a deal. Now, the season hasn't started yet, but you could put down some player prop bets before the season even starts. If you check out the quarterback prop bet for 30-plus touchdowns, you'll see Daniel Jones all the way at the bottom. And for everybody that thinks Daniel Jones and the offense are going to succeed this year, that's plus 4,000? I mean, I would take that. I mean, Jones with Malik Neighbors, Jalen Hyatt, a couple of running backs that can catch the ball at the backfield, Theo Johnson, and a revamped offensive line, he may hit 30-plus touchdowns. And if you bet now, you'll win big. Click the link below and make sure you guys use the promo code JOIN125. And as always, bet responsibly. All right, so let's. This is the first play of the game. Uh, Drew Locke under center, and you got your two wide receivers out here, Jalen Hyatt and uh, Malik Neighbors. We're going to be seeing a lot of them on the starting offense this season with Daniel Jones under center. So, what are we looking at with this defense here? We're looking at um, po a possible blitz. We got a five man front over here. Um, we got the safety coming down. What is it looking like? Um, you got uh, these corners really, uh, um, you know, really right on the line of scrimmage on these wide receivers. Probably looking like man, right? Probably looking like a cover one man or some sort. So um, that's what the Giants are, are looking at offensively. That's what Drew Locke sees under center. So he's going to snap this thing. It's going to be a play action. He's going to be looking for the deep shot because, um, you know, he thought it was like a cover one you know, cover one situation, and that's going to favor the outside receivers. But as you guys can see, uh, they they showed a cover one, but the safety dropped back, and they're now in a cover two. Um, I, I want to say this is like cover two, man. It looks like man, but it's kind of like zone, but these guys are zoned off. Um, this the, even even this guy backed off off the, off, off the blitz because the tight end is staying, so he's uh, dropping back in coverage, and it's not there, right? So Drew Locke had nothing to do but uh, run with this. But the reason why I wanted to highlight this is because um, this is what the Giants want to do. This is what Brian Dable wants to do this year. They want to air the ball out. We've seen that throughout this preseason. They've been trying to do it. They haven't been able to do it in this game, but you can see based on the play that they're trying to do it. So, you know, they got deep shots right here. Just outside, you know, get, get outside leverage and, and get open. These guys are just not open. You see these safeties kind of uh, rolling to the, uh, the the wide receiver, and I know a lot of people may 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 point out, you know, they play screenshot screenshot um, film reviews, and they say, oh my god, look at this, all this separation here, ten yard, five yards with this guy, and almost ten yards with this guy. He's got to be open. He's not open. This is not open. Especially if you wanted to air this ball, I mean, we'll have a better we'll have a better example. So we'll we'll talk about it later. But like I said, the Giants want to want to air the ball out. They tried to do it on the first play, and um, they were they were fooled by the defensive coverage. All right, this is Exhibit A of why Josh Zudu just should not be a tackle. And I don't even think he's going to be a bad guard. He just never gets to practice at guard, right? And obviously, this is a preseason. He's a swing tackle right now. And, um, yeah, it just sucks when you come out of college as a versatile offensive lineman, so they just throw you wherever, you know. Here's Josh Azudu here. Um, you got this uh, edge defender. He looks like he's about to speed, speed rush on you. He's way off the line. Well, way, way, way outside from the tackle in, like, a, you know, 7-9 tech, right? So he, he's getting ready on – look at this stance. Speed rush, right? Trying to hit the outside. And you guys know you guys know what kick sliding is, right? You guys know people 
put memes on it all the time on TikTok and stuff like that of, of people practicing their, their kick slides. Where's the kick slides here, bro? Where's the kick slides here? There's just, there's no kick slide. All right, he panics. He panics. And this is what we saw last year from him, right? You have to move the mouse out the way. Uh, we put it on slow motion. He gets out of his stance. He has that anchor foot down, but then his feet get parallel to each other and they get close to each other, right? You always want to keep a wide stance. They get close to each other. Um, and he just starts chasing the edge defender and he just gives way slowly, but surely gives way. He does not set, uh, you know, he does not hold a foundation. He doesn't, he misses his punches. I don't know. Does he do it here? He kind of ghost punches there, misses his punches, panics. He gets in panic mode when you're not, you know, you don't kick slide and you don't, you know, wait for that. You have to control the situation. When you're off offensive lineman versus defensive lineman, you got to control the situation. And um, it's all about control and leverage. And he just gives way constantly. Time and time again, just gives way. One of the biggest highlights in this game was the running backs. And all of the running backs, they all performed pretty well. But there were some gripes that I have with them. And um, we're just going to show a little bit of that right now. So we see this Tyrone Tracy handoff, right? It's almost like a... The way, the way Drew Locke handed it off, it was almost like a misdirection, right? It probably was a misdirection because you had Kubis pulling to the other side, right? A little bit of a misdirection play. Um, on, if you look at, we'll watch it slowly, right? When Tracy gets his hand off here, I would have, this is me personally, I would have just followed Kubis, right? I would have followed Kubis, wait to see what he does over here and kind of decide what I'm going to do here, Okay. Tracy kind of took the opportunity because he saw a little bit of open lane here, but it closed up really quickly. This off, uh, um, Schlotman was on the floor in a matter of a millisecond, and he was just met up by three defensive uh, defensive linemen or three Detroit Lions. I would have probably followed Kubis here. I think you would have got a lot more of a bigger gain there if you would just kept following Kubis and see where it t where it took you, and you kind of you could have uh, kind of decided where you can go from there. So if you look at Tracy here, and if you look at Kubis, we'll back up a slight bit here, right? If he would have just kept following him, maybe he would have bulldozed through here, and they would have figured out a lane, you know? It didn't need to be a touchdown, but you probably could have got more yards than you got here, right? Now, this is what I want to see. I want to see this in the regular season. I talked about this when we drafted Malik Neighbors. I talked about it a little bit with Bobby Skinner on the Talking Giants channel when he had me on. But the Yankee concept, something that Brian Dable loves to implement in his system, is something that the Giants have been running since 2022, since Brian Dable has been here. And the we have the perfect wide receivers to do that. Malik Neighbors on, uh, on the underneath, on the over route, and you have uh, Jalen Hyatt on the either clear out or you could throw the post if he's open. He, Jalen Hyatt can get open on a clear out, all right? These safeties have to respect the speed. So... This is this could have been open, and we're going to go to Drew Locke's perspective in just a second. But uh, Yankee concept, like I said, is just going to be an over route. If you just follow my mouse, it's going to be an over route uh, on the middle of the field here. It's like a dig, right? Kind of, but but it's not like a like a pointed dig, and not like a, a you know a deep cut. You're just kind of just going across the field, um, and then you've got uh, Jalen Hyatt. You can you can. You can kind of decide what you want to do, but it has to be a high-stemmed route where it has to be either a post route, post corner, um, you know, clear route, just a straight up nine, you know, something like that. Something that goes deep downfield, right? Um, that you can possibly throw if it's open, but you're really not really supposed to throw this. But Jalen Hyatt is a guy that's going to attract a lot of attention downfield. You're going to attract the safety, and it works. Malik Neighbors gets great separation. Uh, linebackers are, are, are behind here. They're dropping back. However, there is a point in time where Drew Locke had an opportunity possibly to just air this to, to Malik Neighbors. This could have been Malik Neighbors, Neighbors' first catch here. This was on the opposite hash across the field, but if you're a great QB, you make plays like this, okay? If you're a great QB, you make plays like this. Um, it is the preseason, so I don't expect something crazy like that to happen. Uh, you know, but Malik Neighbors was was wide open here, and I don't think I think Drew Locke could have put enough air on this, and and led led Malik Neighbors all the way down here, um, for a completed pass. I think he has the arm to do it. He was pressured. And that's the only problem here, man. 
the offensive line. The offensive line will not allow these plays to happen. You look how look how and look how open Malik Neighbors could have been. A good quarterback can get right over those linebackers and target Malik Neighbors, but look how fast the pocket is already breaking down and Drew Locke just doesn't have any time to throw. Even if he were to step up in the pocket, he's going to be met up by this guy that Kubis has. And then Joshua Miles is already letting his guy go. And so Drew Locke is forced to escape out the pocket on to the right side and just dump off to Daniel Bellinger, who was already on a delayed route as it was in case that happened. But man, I mean, if he would have had a clean pocket to throw, a clean pocket to throw, just 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 once, just just, just this once, a clean pocket to throw, he would have had. Look at Malik Neighbors right here. He's right here. You can get right over these these linebackers. We've seen Tommy DeVito do it in this game. He can get right over these linebackers and target Malik Neighbors, and that would have been his his first catch of the game. And you guys can see how open he was. I mean, this is huh, we've seen Malik Neighbors in college. This can possibly be a touchdown. I mean, even though you're catching this around the 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 46 yard line on the opposite side of the field, this could possibly still be a touchdown. Like it's Malik Neighbors, the infamous open play by Malik Neighbors that went viral on like every social media app on uh, uh, that that covers football on Twitter, including like the sleeper app, the, the the fantasy football app. They should stick to fantasy football because I don't know if they were just looking for clicks or engagement because it went viral. But guys, you, you you can't possibly think this is open. I mean, listen, in a situation where you got a, a elite quarterback that is gonna fit, just gonna throw that whole shot on this slot fade. I mean, they're baiting this. I mean, you're falling right into the Lions' trap. This is what they want you to think. They're baiting this. They've got all right. The reason why this corner is trailing here, right, and playing behind Malik Neighbors is because he knows that the that the safety is rolling coverage. To Malik Neighbors. He is on Malik Neighbors. This safety is watching where Malik Neighbors is at. He's watching the ball. They're sandwiching him. They're waiting for this ball to be thrown. They are, they, are You'll be surprised how fast, especially a ball that's being thrown deep downfield from the 31-yard line all the way to the opposite 40 or possibly even farther than that. That ball takes a while to get there. These guys are already going to be there. All right? This is not, you don't throw this. You don't throw this. This is not open. Everybody plays screenshot film reviews. This is not open. Not open. This is the slot fade. This is Malik Neighbors' best route. Yes. And this is why they were exactly prepared for what Malik Neighbors was going to do. This is exactly what the safety was expecting. It's what he's waiting for. It's what the corner is waiting for as well. To close down on that route. This is Drew Locke's interception here. It looks like it's some sort of dagger concept, right? Um where you're going to have Isaiah McKenzie clear out here, but he kind of trips up. Not that it really matters too much. The Lions just play great man defense. Like whoever, I don't know who their defensive coordinator is nowadays or who their special, uh, their, their secondary coach is nowadays, but they, these guys, these guys be playing their hearts out, man. They play some good coverage from what I noticed. Like how, like, like glue they're on. Terry and Arnold, you know, allowed a little bit to Malik Neighbors. Malik, Malik Neighbors wasn't targeted, but interception. Check out this how smart this safety was. All right, so if you see what the covers they're in, it looks like they're showing uh, cover two man, right? You got two high safeties here. Uh, you got these corners pressed up on these uh, wide receivers, and they're looking straight at them. Usually a big indicator of if you're looking at man or zone. Sometimes the, you know, the, the, the corner would be looking at the quarterback if it's man or whatever, but usually a big indicator of man or zone is if the, quarter, uh, the cornerbacks uh, or defensive backs head is on the eyes are on the wide receiver or if they're on the quarterback usually if they're on the quarterback you're looking at zone if they're on the the wide receiver you're looking at man that's usually a big indicator so you can see this is probably man and now it looks like he's starting to, to bail a little bit so now we're looking at cover one robber where the safety is coming down and playing a robber position he's waiting for any in breaking route to show up there. He stays patient. He knows Malik Neighbors is going on that out route. He knows that this is probably a clear out. He, we're, we're looking at a dagger concept. So he he bites right down on this dig route and intercepts the ball. Smart, smart job, uh, smart uh, play by Brennan Joseph. And th this is a sloppy work here, man. Sloppy, sloppy cut because he's, he's pressed up on man. He's not able to break free. Look at this. Constantly bullied here. 
The corner just takes control of this entire route. Isaiah McKenzie slips on the clear out. He trips. You know, McKenzie did not do a great job in this game. Interception. I was really impressed by Jake Kubis, the undrafted free agent uh, rookie. I believe, is he from North Dakota? I believe he's from North Dakota. That's like the Alabama of like FCS. Um, so shout out to him. But he did a good job in this game. Uh, I was impressed both run blocking and pass blocking for a undrafted free agent rookie. Uh, check this out. is a handoff by Tyrone Tracy. And look how patient Kubis is with this combo block. He doesn't straight up go to the second level like a, like, you know, just, just impatient. Uh, he shows a lot of patience here on this combo block. Waits. He, he Obviously, he doesn't have eyes in the back of his head. It, he just has the perfect timing to get off this block and get up to the second level. Boom. And help Tyrone Tracy out. And Tyrone Tracy, good with staying, you know, good center of gravity, great balance as a running back. And you saw Tyrone Tracy, he saw his eyes open up immediately. This was a good job by Josh Zudu here for for uh, kind of uh, manipulating this edge defender to get outside and open up the inside. See, look at that. He's making sure he's he's holding that edge. Zudu is holding that edge very well. He's making sure that, that edge defender does not go back inside. Does a great job here. Good run blocking there by the line. Good job by Kubis. Good job by uh, Izudu. And good job by Tyrone Tracy for immediately seeing that. Even though even though he got this handoff to the right, he goes, man, nothing's open here. Bounce out left. This was a good game here. Now, throughout this game, we saw the Detroit Lions constantly show like uh, show cover one or show cover three or whatever, and then go back up into a two high, uh, uh, you know, two high safety set, which is you know cover two or whatever, and it kind of shuts down those deep routes, those deep um, nine routes for for the offense. But this time they got what they wanted here. They got what they wanted. This is cover one. You got two outside receivers that are going deep. This could be absolute money. You got this safety. Um, playing the the short side of the field on Isaiah Hodgins and look at Allen Robinson and check out this veteran. This is a veteran wide receiver here, man. Allen Robinson, veteran, always makes his quarterback look good no matter what team he's on. Look at this release here, okay? He's got the nine route. He knows that this is single high safety and the single high safety is covering, uh, he's favoring the shorter side of the field. He got all this green here. Look at this, look at this inside move. And just enough for this corner to bite on the inside move and jabs outside. Look at, look at, he's already free. The veteran 30-something-year-old wide receiver, Allen Robinson, is running deep down the field naked. And what, what happened here? Drew Locke is hurt. He's favoring, I think he was favoring his ribs or whatever. Forgot what the injury was. He was already hurt. All right? So he didn't really pay attention to this. He just tried to b throw the ball to Daniel Bellinger. Try to dump it off there, and it was incomplete. But if Drew Locke wasn't hurt, he had he had the offensive line. The line held up for the most part. He had it. He had the pocket. If he would have just saw that, I don't know how you don't though. The play call is deep shot. You deep shot. You got all these. Look at look at this stacked line right here. You got all this room here. It's is, is one on one coverage for the most part. Just read that safety, see where he's going. You saw that safety was was favoring Isaiah Hodgins. Man, that was open right off the get go. I would have just flung this thing, man. And Allen Robinson gained more and more separation as time went on. That would that, that's a touchdown. That is a touchdown. Now, cover two has been one of the most popular coverages to run as a defense, especially in the NFL. But if there's one route that really could do a good job against cover two, it's the corner route. You're going to you're gonna target that intermediate part of the sideline where the corner and safety, uh, they're not quite there, right? So what, what what's the Giants showing? I mean, what are the uh, Lions showing right now? They're showing cover two, but they're showing cover two man. This is still favorable. This is still favorable for a corner route. But what do they sh later show? Cover one. This is even more favorable for a corner route. So you got Isaiah Hodgins here who messes up immediately. Good job by this corner. I can't even say it's that much of a bad job by Isaiah, uh, Isaiah McKenzie as much as it is good coverage by this corner here. This was an incomplete pass, but it 
but it was there. Like, it could have been there. This is cover one. The robber was on his side. You're, you're, you're running your route away from the robber. It wasn't even a badly thrown ball either, but you know what the mistake was. And let's zoom, let's zoom in here. Can I zoom in? Oh, my God, I can. Oh, look at that. All right, what's the mistake here? Isaiah McKenzie, I'm sorry if I called him Hodgins earlier. Isaiah McKenzie tries to get outside outside leverage, right? He tries to get an outside a step in. This this corner is not biting on it. Look at that. This corner is not giving him the the outside. And then I, Isaiah McKenzie can't just sit there and say, can you please let me outside? Can you please let me outside? Isaiah McKenzie doesn't have time to do that. He just takes the he just takes the inside. He takes what the defensive back gave him. And uh and it was it wasn't complete. Now you could get away with running a corner route. You know, you could get away with running a corner route, running inside leverage, but you just gotta be fast enough. You gotta be fast off that line. And as fast as Isaiah McKenzie may be, he wasn't fast enough to get over this this cornerback. It was a, it wasn't even a badly thrown ball at all by by Drew Locke, you know, but just it wasn't complete. I don't want to spend too much time going off on uh, Josh Zudu. I'm just trying to make you guys realize that he's he's a big problem, man. I, I know he's a third-round draft pick, but he is a big problem. There wasn't even much going on over here, right? And you see how, how quickly things fall apart. Josh Zudu immediately off-rip off is just having trouble with this, with this edge defender. I mean, this is borderline a holding call. This is holding. Like, he just grabs him by the neck. And then it forces Kubis to not help Schlotman here. Forces Kubis to say, all right, I'm coming, buddy. I'm coming. I'm going to help you. And it opens up Schlotman. Schlotman, Schlotman basically gives up the pressure. And then uh, the edge defender that was on Azudu winds up, winds up getting the sack. But, I mean, Kubis didn't know what to do. Now, if I was Kubis, I probably would have stuck with the guard. I, I probably stuck with the center. Stuck with Schlotman here. But... To each their own. Still giving up a sack anyway. So, all right. This was the best throw of the day. It was Tommy DeVito. What are we looking at here? Again, cover one. Great play call by Brian Dable. It's clear that he's calling plays now. That that is like all but confirmed. It's clear here that they're running cover one, um, and they might be even sending pressure here. You see this this linebacker is already showing that he's about a blitz. This means you're gonna get some. You're gonna get probably a one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker and your running back here. So you got this wheel going. Linebacker on this on Eric Gray. Eric Gray was known for catching the ball at the backfield at Oklahoma, and this is a beautiful throw. I mean, I mean, so. Be I mean, when I saw it live, I was that, that's a beautiful throw right over the linebacker, and great catch over the shoulder, man, like a wide receiver would. Good job there, man. Good job. And this is what I'm saying. You could throw over linebackers as long as you can have enough touch on the ball. See Tyree Jackson right, right by a linebacker. Tommy DeVito able to fit this just behind Tyree Jackson because if he fits it, we'll go to the next view in a second. If he fits it right in anywhere farther, this could have been an interception by this uh, safety over here or slot corner. It's a good. That's a good ball right there, man. That is a good ball because... You keep watching here. You see him on this kind of over route here, crossing route. And if this ball was any more towards the outside here, this could have been an interception. Obviously, defensive backs are a lot more athletic than linebackers are. Could have been an interception. Great throw by Tommy DeVito, man. He he does impress me with a lot of his throws. I don't think he's really like there to be like a starter, like a full-time starter. But um, you know, he he makes some impressive impressive throws. All right, this was the big run by Eric Gray. I had a lot of fun watching this, man. Big run by Eric Gray. It was a delayed, uh, delayed. Uh, it was a draw, pretty much. And the move right there, because you know why this move has so much, so much significance, is because I saw, I saw a play from number thirty-nine in practice with Eric Gray when he hit Eric Gray so hard that Eric Gray's helmet came off. And he was stomping on the ground, you know, um, you know, priding himself. And hey, you knock somebody, you knock somebody on their ass, and their helmet comes off. Yeah, I would do the same thing, right? Eric Gray had the last laugh here. I don't know about you guys, 
first of all, shout out. We're gonna we're gonna look at the offensive line view in a second. But delayed handoff, Eric Gray gets through here. I don't know about you guys. Do you guys think that Eric Gray could have? Because this was a this was a this is not a good angle. I don't think this was a good angle by the safety at all. I think with the momentum that Eric Gray was going, the momentum that Eric Gray was going, I think he could he could have he could have took this to the house already. But I I don't know. I feel like he's stunting on him. I feel like he stunted on him, man. I re- I really feel like that. <laughs> I really feel like he said, "Oh, it's you, it's you." Hold up, boom. <laughs> Dead leg, dead leg back inside into the end zone, man. I feel like it it wasn't unnecessary because he was closing in on him. I feel like Eric Gray could have still went to the house without doing that and just went to the went to the sideline, just ran straight to the sideline. But uh, uh just a great job by the line. You can see Joshua Miles um on this here. Combo block delays a little bit, gets Make sure he keeps the inside secure by keeping everybody else outside. And uh, easy, <clears throat> easy run there. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, Eric Gray. Eric Gray is a one. That, that's a that's the definition of a one cut back, man. That's the definition. This is, he did this all the time in Oklahoma. Like every time he touched the ball, he was at least breaking the first person's ankles. Boom. Boom. And it's crazy about a running back of his size doing that. All right, I want to talk a little bit about Turbo Miller. He had a couple of good runs here. I didn't think he did anything necessarily special. I, I mean, I love his speed, but I feel like a lot of his big runs were due to just a gaping hole by the offensive line and him just taking advantage of it. A big problem I have with Turbo Miller, however, you see how he takes his hand off. He does a great job getting back inside off of this defender. Uh, but then you see this this guy right here, this safety come come down here and just basically arm tackle, hit hit Turbo Miller with his arm and it completely disorients him, completely disorients him. A lot of running backs shake that off. I'm not gonna sit here and say I would shake that off, but a lot of running backs in the NFL shake that off and keep it moving. But this safety just put an arm on on Turbo and completely spun him around and got him to the ground. Like he's got to put on a little bit more weight. If you see from the other from the other view, I mean, he could have been off to the races here had he had this safety not really been too much of a bother to him, man. He could have been gone. There was nobody after this safety, nobody. That was it. He could have he could have been gone. He had a a good step inside here, great move inside here. Look at this little bit amount of green he had to get through here. He did it, which was great. But he gets. He gets kind of hit with the arm there, and he just completely gets spun around. He, gets, he does like a 720, this man does. Hold on. Boom. Oh, he does, he does a 360, but another 360 on the way to the ground. And then this is another good run that he had here. Um, probably the best run that he had of the night. Uh, just, just a big hole there that the offensive line opened up, and he was able to take advantage with his speed. But a good job by uh, 68 and 62. Able to open up that hole. And uh, and keep it moving. Alright, welcome to the defensive film review. I got a couple of plays here I got from the first half. And, you know, we'll wrap it up and get out of here, man. But um, I, it's on a different day, obviously, if, you don't, if I'm wearing different clothes on. Because <laughs> uh, I recorded the offense at like 1 in the morning or something like that. So, um, alright. So, over here, it looks like we got base 3-4. It looks like... From what I've seen in the preseason, like when when the Lions or you know when the opponent is 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 lining up with a heavier set, heavier personnel, it looks like we are going to come out in three base three four. Something that we haven't seen with Wink Martindale that much. It, we kind of lived out of the nickel uh, for the most part. So base three four, five down linemen. Uh, it looks like we're running some sort of man slash zone um, because we got Tay Banks manned up here on this receiver but Trey Hawkins kind of lets this receiver cross over in anticipation for the run but it's a play action rollout so he kind of runs after I guess the deep route while Tyler Newbin picks up this over route I thought this was great communication um I'm not too familiar with what kind of play call this is um but it looks good. It look it looks like cover one robber, right? It looks like robber because you have Belton here in the middle, but he's following this flat. 
I'm not really sure what it is, but it, it was good communication. And it wound up being, you know, a nothing play for for the Lions. So it wound up being a sack actually. Um, Deontay Banks get uh, Deontay Banks Deontay Johnson gets in there. Listen, I am advocating for another chance for Trey Hawkins to be cornerback too. I am not a Cordell Flock guy at all, but I love Trey Hawkins. I love his underdog story. Uh, but you can see him here working on this uh, wide receiver and just. Closing up at the right time, if there's one specialty or one special trait that Trey Hawkins has, it's closing up at the right time. We've seen this in the preseason last year. I mean, he's able to rubber band that route squeeze that um, that franchise guy likes to call it. Uh, there's not really a specific name, but just the amount of time it takes for him to break on the route and come back to the ball and play the route. You see he kind of gets pushed off there on the cut. It's a really deep cut. Not very quick by the receiver, but it's a deep cut. And um, he's able to bounce back and make it just in time for the ball to get there and not be called for a penalty. Uh, Trey Hawkins Trey Hawkins did a good job in this game. All right, and this is just cover one done right. I don't, I forgot the name of this front here. Can somebody please in the comments tell me the name of this front where they kind of leave both A gaps wide open and they're just playing three techs? Three techs and then the five. Can you guys, can somebody, because usually you'll have, and usually when they line up like this, you have two linebackers uh, filling in those A gaps. Like if you guys play Madden double A gap blitz, um, can you let me know the name of this front? I don't know the name of this front, um, but whatever. Um, so this is just cover one done right, right? You're going to see they're showing two, and then eventually you'll have one guy come down as the robber. This time it's, I believe that's Nubin. And look at everybody's covered. Everybody's covered. Um, the quarterback decides to take a deep shot with to Tay Banks. I know Tay kind of let up over here, but he knew that he this receiver couldn't catch the ball. He went out of bounds. And Belton makes a really good angle to get there to the to the ball carrier just in case this was you know on target. Belton gets there at a good time. So this is just cover one done right, man. You want you want to show two in the beginning, so you you know you would think. You know that that there's there might be extra space down here, right? There might be some space. There's one linebacker here in the middle, and then all of a sudden, that guy's blitzing. Safety comes down. Nobody's open. Good man coverage. You see Drew Phillips as well. Drew Phil, check out Drew Phillips in the slot handling this receiver fine. Look at that, stuck him like like glue. And then on the other side here, Trey Hawkins doing the same thing, guarding up this nine route very very nicely. This is just great defense right here if there's one biggest takeaway i took from the giants defensive film is the linebacker play is just exceptionally better it just flat out is better whether it be deontay johnson uh muasau um we saw darian beavers make a bit of plays out there um and and we, we just have good linebacker play now so you check out uh darius muasau here our rookie uh draft pick out of ucla getting right in there shutting down that that fullback able to shed the block, bounce right off of it, and make a tackle. Like too many times do we see linebackers in the past with the Giants eat this block, not be able to get off of it, and this running back is just moving on ahead. This is a good job by the rookie out of UCLA, man. Um, excited to see what he's going to provide. Um, I like him as a player. I just don't know how, how he'll get playing time with all the linebackers we do have. You guys know I was not too enthusiastic about the Andrew Phillip draft. Uh, when we drafted Andrew Phillips in the third round, there were a couple of other guys I really wanted in his place. And you guys knew I did not like Andrew Phillips prior to the draft because of his tackling ability. He like basically whiffed on a third of his tackles or a quarter of his tackles um, in college. And that's just not a good uh, tackle rate at all but he does a great job on a nickel blitz here check him out number 22 does a great job on the nickel blitz and stopping the running back running back could have just flattened him out maybe maybe made a move maybe uh give him a little stiff arm but he gets low he gets right on the legs tackles twist down and that's just that's routine tackling right there man i got so hyped when i saw this in real time so hyped Good job by Andrew Phillips. 
Now, I was very impressed with Tyler Newbin's play. The very limited amount of time we were able to see him. Uh, there was a couple of plays, consecutive couple of plays, that he really um, impressed me, especially in the box where he is kind of thrives, right? He's a very smart, instinctual player, very good, closer to the line of scrimmage. Here we have him right here um, in the uh, you know two safety set, uh, two high safety set, and uh, showing cover two. But he's going to come down here and play this wide receiver screen. But sometimes he sees a little too much red. Sometimes he comes downhill a little too fast. And he completely whiffs on the tackle here. And this is something that I don't want to be concerned about. Because this is a rookie uh, defensive player. They miss tackles all the time. However, this is something that we did see quite noticeably at his time in Minnesota, a lot of people have also mentioned that, that he'll come downhill and just completely miss on the tackle, either make a bad angle or just put too much juice into, you know, his tackle attempt that he loses that side to side quickness. And, um, and you know, it sucks because if Musial wasn't there to clean it up. What if it was a, a farther, you know, wide receiver screen? What if it was, you know, somewhat closer to the to the boundary and he's the only line of defense there I mean that could have been a really big play you know you don't want to miss those type of tackles let's talk a little bit more Trey Hawkins man again he's very I mean he's like 6'2 a huge wingspan um I think he ran like a 437 40 yard dash or something like that I could be completely making that up in my head but I knew he was fast I know he's a he's a absolute like built in the lab type cornerback just has to put it all together but you can see the potential of Trey Hawkins, man. He's on the top of your screen right here, lined up in press. You can see him here. And this is going to be a back shoulder. I have always told you guys on this channel that back shoulders are, one, one of the hardest throws to make because you have to have real good chemistry with your wide receiver of where that ball is going to be at. And two, it's one of the hardest to defend, okay, because you don't know where that ball is coming from, especially if you're playing man defense and you're just watching the hips of the wide receiver. He'll stop on a dime and go after that ball, right? So if you're not paying attention, if you're not looking, he can catch this on you. Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger mastered that, mastered that. Um, and Antonio Brown was so good at selling the, the deep route until the ball was actually there. And the wide receiver actually doesn't do a bad job here. But Trey Hawkins just completely like stops on a dime with the wide receiver, almost like he knew, you know, stops right with him, puts his hand in there, swipes down, and the ball is incomplete. That's just a great play by the second-year corner, man. And this is why I really want him to have another shot at cornerback two. I don't really think the difference between him and Cordell Flott is that bad. And I really want him to work out um, because I, I feel like he has more potential as a corner than Cordell Flott. As much as I hate to say it because I'm a huge Micah McFadden fan, Deontay Johnson had himself a game uh, on Thursday versus the Lions. And this is a, one of the plays that I felt like he really showed how instinctual he could be and how good this linebacker, this is a testament of how good this linebacker play has gotten throughout the years um, with, the, with the players that we have here. So shout out to Deontay Johnson. He's stacked here right over the nose, right? The linebackers are stacked here uh, with the safety here. So you got, a, you got a run here, you got the cutoff block here, and look how well he takes care of this gap, where he just doesn't like mindlessly shoot the gap, right? He doesn't mindlessly shoot this gap, so he, he'll run into this tight end. He stays patient, he stays patient, stops right, right at the hole, waits for that running back, and makes the tackle. Instead of shooting, because... Because, you know, you play Madden or maybe you even watch a bad linebacker that just sees red. It's just like a raging bull. You'll see him a lot of these times. Maybe he'll shoot this gap, right? Maybe he'll shoot this gap and get hit by this cutoff. Or maybe he'll shoot over here and get hit by the cutoff. Or completely just whiff on the tackle and then the running back kind of be uh, you know stays patient, waits for the linebacker to pass, and he'll hit this hole, right? He stood patient. Look at it. Just stutters a little bit. What you want to see stays patient. You don't have to be a raging bull and just hit the hole as hard as you can or as fast as you can. You can be patient and uh, good things will come your way. Now, I want you guys in the comments to really um, help me out here of what we're looking at here because, all right, we're seeing it looks like it's a, a, it looks like man, right? It looks like off coverage, man coverage, but just off, 
right? Off man coverage. And but these safeties don't really come down too far. I don't know if it's just because there's only four wide receivers here. Um and you know, they're staying, you know, they're staying kind of close to the line here that they that they want to draw. But you have this wide receiver wide open here. Who messed up here? Because sometimes if you're playing a zone, I think they're in man, but if you're playing a zone, sometimes you'll have the inside inside uh, defensive back take care of the flat and you have this guy, you know, coming, uh, you know, taking anything that's deep. Pause. But <laughs> I think this is man coverage. So I think this corner, Trey Herndon, who had the interception, Trey Herndon messed this up. And that could have been, if this quarterback recognized it sooner or waited a little later, he could have had a free play here. This would have been a touchdown. There was no other person here. The safeties did not come, you know, play back. It looks like maybe they were they were in man, you know. Um, or maybe they were in cover one, right? They were still in show two, cover one, as this safety takes care of this tight end or wide receiver. Uh, Darnay Holmes gives up a catch there, but I don't know whose fault this is, you know. I'm watching here. Looks like Darnay Holmes was already prepared for the cut outside. Trey Herndon uh, lets go of this wide receiver closer to him. And that could have been really bad. It looks like Trey Herndon adjusted at the end. Maybe it was his assignment because he saw... Maybe it was his assignment. I don't know. But you guys let me know who's at fault here. All right, here's the Boogie Basham sack. Gets inside. I, I don't know how to feel about Boogie Basham. Oh, by the way, um, you know, let's look at this again. Let's watch it in slow motion. You know, check out Boogie Basham, right? He's going to, he's gonna you know, go outside and step inside for the sack. It was pretty quick. Um, good job by him. But he completely shuts this down because there are a couple of open open receivers here you got this flat open um you're not hitting this this guy on this on this stop route over here you're not hitting that but you can hit this spot route right here down uh, down the middle you can definitely hit that you can you got you got a guy coming out the backfield as well um there are a couple of options to hit but boogie basham is already there by the time these guys stop for the route we've seen that earlier already with uh with one of the tight ends able to stop there and make a good catch so and he stopped. He stopped. He stopped the catch there, and you could see from this point of view, lined up pretty outside past the tight end. Tight end lets him go, gets inside, and that tackle had no chance. All right, guys, that is the video. Huge shout out to BetUS for sponsoring this video. Let me your thoughts in the comment section below. Who do you guys think played the best, and who do you guys think disappointed you and played the worst? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. We'll see you guys in the next video. Woo!